Hello, hello. I've arrived. All right, so. Arknights. Yes, so, today, we're going to be playing some more Arknights. Yeah, a little bit late today. A little bit late today, unfortunately, but oh well. Yeah, we're certainly... Yeah, anyway. So, Arknights, schedule. So, today, Arknights. I've said Arknights so many times. <laughs> Okay, so we've already established what we're doing today, I think, fairly well enough. So, tomorrow we should be seeing some more Tales of Arise. Incidentally, tomorrow is also my second anniversary of streaming here on Twitch.tv, which is very nice. But yeah, so I don't, I don't think I'm going to do sort of a full anniversary stream stream if that makes any sense i think what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to devote the first part of the stream to devote some time at the start of the stream to the anniversary and all that and then you know the rest of the stream will more or less proceed as normal yes yeah, should be some more tales of arise tomorrow yes either that or i will just do a sort of short segment for the anniversary and then perhaps just cut it there because yeah definitely i've got a lot of stuff that i need to take care of <laughs> to be honest so you know but yes so then on thursday we should be seeing some more uh valhalla at least i don't have any reason to believe that we won't be at this point yes yeah, so that'll be some more va11 hall a cyberpunk bartender action with our good friend Sheppy Sheps, as always. And then on Friday, you should expect some more Tales of Arise. As per usual, all streams are scheduled for 8.30 p.m. Central Time. They usually don't start quite that early, but they're scheduled for that. So yes. So, in case you were wondering, the movie is going to be a regular feature here. I might swap it out for another one at some point, but I like the movie quite a bit, so... Or, for the present moment, the movie will remain. So I hope you can all appreciate it as much as I do. But yes. So, other than that, I suppose there's not a whole lot to be said before we get started. So, why don't we get started? Uh, there we are. And we don't have game audio, it looks like. That's no good. It's also very strange, because we should have game audio. Hmm. I'm now struck by the horrifying notion that maybe we didn't have game audio for the whole of last stream. Because I don't remember changing my settings since then, so it couldn't have been anything that has happened since then. So, um... Maybe we didn't have game audio last stream. <laughs> oh, we definitely we definitely have background music on right now, which we shouldn't. There we are. But yes. No, actually, no, no. I remember. I I was very specific. I was very careful in checking the the game audio last time around. So we definitely did have it. I'm confident we did have it because I remember I would messed around with it somewhat. Okay, so. <laughs> That's one crisis averted. But yes. As for a crisis that I failed to avert, uh, as it turns out, I forgot to uh, read through the after mission story of this, uh, this here mission, which is, you know, if it weren't particularly important, I would probably just acknowledge that and move on. But this, this particular bit of post-mission story introduces some rel relatively important concepts to Arknights, I think. So I'd wa want to get, want to go over that before we get stuck in. <coughs> Just double checking that we have game audio again, even though I already checked. Ugh. You bunch aren't from Ursus. Looks like they didn't have time to notify the others. Well done, Dr. Tiber. 
I really should review your capabilities more objectively. Huh? Amya? She's headed over to them. Are you okay? Huh? Oh, thank you. No problem. It's our... You're, you're also an infected? What do you want? Don't hurt my children. I'm begging you. Please don't hurt us. Find a safe place to hide. Please have mercy. Let us go. Has everyone gotten enough rest? Ah, uh, I'm fine. Why is she afraid of you? Mm. Dr. Tiber, you've also asked me a similar question before. Because I am an infected. Doberman and I, and most of the members of Rhodes Island, are as well. Even those reunion members who we just fought. We've contracted a terrible illness, something that terrifies most people. Oropathy. Those who have contracted oropathy are called the infected. Doberman. Ursus has always treated the infected harshly. I mean, who doesn't? Ursus just happens to be particularly cold-blooded about it. Civilians are taught to fear the infected through propaganda. No one even bats an eye when the infected are hunted down, and some even cheer for it. That's why Reunion chose this place. However, this time it's not just a simple protest anymore. They've begun to resort to large-scale violence. When Ursus puts an end to the rioting, the infected in Chernobog will only face more cruelty. In contrast, with you here, Dr. Tiber, perhaps Rhodes Island's situation will improve. I see. I must be pretty important. That seems a little bit presumptuous. Is this also related to me? Both Calcite and Amia have mentioned you are a cutting-edge oropathy researcher. But with your memory loss, I doubt whether you'll be of, you'll be of any use again. Uh, instructor, that's way too harsh. Perhaps you'll be able to master the theories again after some reviewing, just like how you re may relearned your commanding skills. After all, you are our field commander. To be honest, I never thought a neurology doctor would also be a master tactician. But after seeing you, I can somehow understand it. I mean, Rhodes Island itself is very similar to your field of study. Hey, stop running. It's time for your injection. Huh? Uh, I told you I'm fine. I don't need treatment yet. You need to get your regular injection to slow your symptoms. Didn't you say you were feeling dizzy? That's not the same condition at all. What if you start having other issues when you're in battle? For the sake of everyone's safety, you have to take care of yourself, too. Mm. Stop right there. I'm giving you the shot. Ugh. Mm. This is what Rhodes Island does. We're looking for a cure to the infection, as well as mitigating the problems associated with the infected. That's right. There's not enough to, conduct, to only conduct research. We also, or only to try to resolve conflicts. We must address all of the problems surrounding the infected. This is the only way for Rhodes Island to give all the infected a chance at survival. We understand them most because, than most others because we, like them, are also infected. No matter who is involved or what is required, Rhodes Island seeks to put an end to the spread of hatred and disease. Dr. Tiber, perhaps this will be your calling as well. At least, this is my wish. I certainly hope so, too. But what are you talking about? <laughs> that seems like the, the most appropriate option, in my mind at least. Yeah, maybe not the most appropriate, but the least inappropriate for the situation. I don't want to give it more time to think. I'm, al I'm already decided on what I'm doing. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hmm. Okay, hold on. I will... Ah, pick. 
Yeah, just saying hi, leaving alert. All right. Well, glad you stopped by. Hope you're having a fine night. Oh, I just realized I forgot my intro again. Oh, well. We will give you plenty of time to let this all sink in. However, the time given to us is scarce. Gather up, everyone. We're leaving. Anything could happen on our way to the meeting point. Amia. The situation in Chernobog has become very complicated. We can't afford to create ex Pardon. To create extra pressure for the rescue team, but... How much time do we have left? Three hours. After three hours, this entire city will be consumed by the catastrophe. After that, everything will be over then. Mysterious individual. We've found some unknown variables. Notify the others. Now. We're going after them. Alright. Give me just one second here. Okay, it's a matter of no great concern. Anyway, so. Yes, so that introduced some pretty important uh, concepts here that I'm... <laughs> that I uh, definitely should not have skipped over last time. I apologize for having done so, albeit unintentionally. But yes, so the infection, the infected, the infection, I guess, <laughs> oropathy, yes, oropathy, the infected, uh, catastrophes are all very, very important parts of Arc Knight's lore that we will see some more about. I could have, you know, simply summarized that, but I wanted to present it. You know, I wanted to present it Give you the give you the experience you know the story experience but yes so i should have been keeping better notes and i apologize for not doing so but i do believe because yes this one was right so we did training two we finished training two last time and so we are on to mission three I should probably spend less time thinking about how many how many more missions we have left in this chapter and more time going through the missions in this chapter if I want to get through them in a timely fashion. And I ideally would. Hmm. Ah, oh, hold on. Just not just not. Ah, okay, this one doesn't have story, so we're just gonna skip it. I'm only interested in the ones that, that have some story or dialogue associated with them, and number three is apparently not one of those. That's three. That's strange. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember any missions not having a story associated with them. But apparently that's not all that uncommon. So I guess we're... <laughs> Maybe I should have checked these things earlier. Oh well. Let's learn about how to take on aerial units with sniper operators. Now we'll finally get to see Jessica in battle after seeing her in her tactical role thus far. Ready to heal. Got it. Place Yato down. So yes. Last time, last time after we concluded the gameplay portion of the stream, I spent some time talking about uh, the various characters. All right. Yeah, I spent some time talking about well, not the various characters, about a specific character. Jessica, you will also often encounter aerial targets, which can only be damaged by operators with ranged attacks. Ah, I'm good at that. My weapons are long range as well. Correct. Now deploy the ranged operator you have available. Jessica, you can join Doctor's team after this training session. You'll need to have more actual combat experience. Ah, hello. Hello, all. Hi, Pick and Tibbs. Hello to you as well. Good to have you around. Hope you're having a fine night as well. What? Really? So yes. So we talked about a character. We talked about a character. That character being Dr. Arknights himself. But yeah. So this this time, we'll be talking about a few different characters. Probably won't be going over them in great detail. But we'll be talking about a few characters, including Yato and Rangers here. What are your orders? 
Alright. So this mission shouldn't be too terribly eventful. So we can probably just fast forward through the rest of it. Mission accomplished. So yeah. Looking after everyone's so yes, I chose Yato and uh, her squad, so to speak. Yeah, I guess it is literally her squad, considering that she is the leader of the operation team. <laughs> yes, I chose them for a very specific reason, which we'll go into later. Hmm, this one only has a story before. Interesting. Hmm. <clears throat> Ace. Looks like you all made it out alive. This isn't the rendezvous point. Why are you here alone? They're the ones that escaped from the central area. Don't let them get away. <sighs> they just keep coming after us. Team E2, prepare to intercept. Doberman, don't get overzealous. Recruiting is our top priority. Amia, Dr. Tiber, quick. It's not safe here either. That's right. We still need to press on to the next rendezvous point. Where's your team? Where are you rats hiding? Smoke them out. Here they come again. Dr. Tiber, please give us your orders. Just like the good old days. Hmm? Um, Ace? Actually, something unexpected has happened. Doctor is suffering from amnesia. I see. I'm sorry, Ace, but compared to before, a lot has changed. Is that so? You don't need to apologize to me. Have the doctor's commanding capabilities suffered as a result of this amnesia? As sharp as before. Doctor's decision-making is still absolutely reliable, I can promise you this. Very well, then. I'll follow the doctor's orders, then. What has been lost can be found again. Right now, there's a more imminent problem on our hands. They're over here. Hurry, let's get them. Are you done chatting yet? I'm going to crack some skull. I'm going to go crack some skulls. Dr. Tiber, please give us your orders. Go, release your inner beast and let them feel your fangs. Doctor, Ace, the enemy is right in front of us. All right. <laughs> Got it. Understood. Team E3, back up Doberman. An ambush? Team E3 has been moving under the cover this whole time. I see, they've been waiting for us to pincer the enemy. When communications are jammed, our teams should operate near the rendezvous point. That way, even if something happens to me or the scout, the broader operation can still be carried out. This is my decision making. In other words, Ace, you left your team back at the rendezvous point and came here alone. After all, neutralizing threats around the rendezvous point is our top objective. Of course, prioritizing checking your, on your status is a big risk. There's no way I could imperil the entire team. The whole reason teams exist is to increase tactical efficiency, not the other way around. <sighs> Let's continue our discussion after we've taken care of Reunion. Amya, you're up. Understood. I'll back you up with my arts. Finally. Dr. Tiber, please command Rhodes Island. Don't have to ask me twice. Alright, so, let us resume. I was hesitating for a second there because I wanted to be absolutely sure that I was picking the Things right mission. Different. I don't want to hide myself any longer. All right, so put down Scavenger as our vanguard this time around. Again, not necessarily super strict on who gets positioned where, when. These are still pretty easy missions. And even more so, because I'm going to be deploying Amia, who is very, very too high level to be participating in this, really. No but, you know. Mm, no, I'll need to place April a little bit closer. But yeah, so like I was mentioning last time around, some characters have English voices and some don't. Which, I don't know, feels a little bit odd to me. 
you know, I know why it is, but it feels a little bit odd to me no to have some English and some, or some speaking English and some not speaking English. So I'm still not entirely sure whether I want that to be the case or whether I'll just set everyone to their default Japanese voices. Roy Vermeil there. So that none of the drones will sneak by us. And probably this should be more or less what we, uh, all we need for the rest of this mission, I think. So yeah, so I'll give a little bit more thought to it, especially now that we're seeing some more mixes or seeing more of a mix of char characters with Japanese voices and characters with English voices. But yeah. So we we will see. And yeah, this one didn't have a host story, did it? Okay. All right. I missed what the this training was about. Uh, I guess this is just talking about Vanguard specifically. Down. Even operators from the same class may have different capabilities. As a vanguard, Plume has, has low deployment costs as well as balanced attack and defense. However, she can only block one enemy unit. At the same time, Plume can recover additional costs from defeating an enemy, making her a good choice for early game. Try to deploy Plume to stop the enemy's initial rush. We will do Understood. just that. Your guard up. Speed up a little bit. More enemy troops are coming, but Plume alone cannot block all of them. Fortunately, Vanguard Fang has arrived. As a Vanguard, Fang also has a very low deployment cost, but unlike Plume, Fang has lower attack and higher defense. She can also block two enemies at the same time. On top of that, Fang's ability can also provide lots of costs periodically, which will be ideal for the subsequent deployment of other operators. Please deploy Fang immediately to defend against the coming enemies. You know, Leave it to us. Fast forward through the rest of this. And so yes. So you're getting a little glimpse at that. I suppose I don't necessarily need to reiterate. Reiterate. I'm currently working sort of under the assumption that you have watched the previous stream, which is not a guarantee, I suppose. Not a guarantee, I suppose. But I don't necessarily feel the need to iterate, reiterate on what the game has just told us given that it's something I have already talked about anyway. All right, so that was tutorial four. Yes, now that I... Now, <laughs> I apologize for the hesitance, but, you know, having, having already accidentally skipped a story, I don't want to skip more. All right. <coughs> It freaks. I can't believe they... They... Those beasts. Were they reunions doing? Hmm. I guess... The, the the stage might have added some context to this, because in this stage, I do remember that you fight uh, more of those hounds that we saw in the previous uh, tutorial level, which are, you know, dogs, basically. Dogs that have been made to fight for reunion. Union enslaved infected beast to use his troops. No, it's not that simple. I can feel it. They are no mere beasts. In fact, they're more like us. Instructor Doberman? <sighs> Boss, what should we do? Give them a merciful end. Boss? Doberman, the battle is over. We also had to face off against reunion forces. The catastrophe is already looming over us. It's likely to break at any moment. Even Chernobog will be reduced to rubble under its direct impact. The Union is taking advantage of this to sow even more chaos. Doberman, we're out of time. You might be able to outmaneuver Reunion or stay concealed from Ursus, but we're powerless in the face of a catastrophe. That's enough. Let's go. No matter how reckless Reunion's plans are, the most important thing for us is everyone's safety. That's right. 
Ninja leaders may see this event as a sign, or even as a means. But for me, it signifies it will be in greater danger from now on. Choosing a time like this to incite chaos. Reunion is either insane or just evil. Perhaps a bit of both. Perhaps indeed. Alright. Alright, now that we're now that we're into the thick of things, it's definitely pro progressing a lot faster. I guess because I'm stopping to to uh, talk less. And when I do talk, as usually I'm timing the times that I stop to talk a bit better, I should say. Speaking of which, Instructor Doberman, why did you choose me? Jessica, you work at Black Steel, a private security consulting company, didn't you? I assume you still remember what you learned there. Y yes I do. But you definitely don't seem prepared. Anyway, you still need to refresh the combat knowledge you learned at, Bro at Black Steel. Deploy Vanguard Fang to hold off the first wave of enemies. Will do. Leave it to us. Ready to heal. And we'll deploy crews as well. Sleep on the job. I see. This enemy is wearing heavy armor and has high defense, so physical attacks can't deal much to him, deal much damage to him. Are you telling me you weren't even aware of that? No. Just don't know the enemy's actual attributes. When I served at Black Steel as a mercenary, I was conducting weapon tests most of the time. All right then, tell us some options that Black Steel taught you when facing such a situation. Okay, my common solution is to use arts attacks to penetrate the enemy's armor. Good, you are correct. Now try it out. A caster operator, Durin, is ready. You may deploy her at any time. Once again, we've already been over casters. So I won't go over them in too much detail, but just as a reminder, they deal a different type of damage that is more effective against enemies with defense because it ignores there defense. But certain enemies have resistance, which allows them to resist the that particular form of damage. Yeah, generally speaking, casters are pretty good for damage. They're a little bit more expensive than snipers, typically for, you know, around the same than I think we did all right. Yeah. They are on average more expensive than snipers of the same rarity. Because yeah, character character cost is determined largely by rarity. Alright, before and after. Sit. It's getting darker and darker. It's as if the clouds are pressing into the skyline. The air still feels clear, but the dark clouds aren't moving. It feels like all the stress is being compressed into a single point. Even the wind has stopped. No doubt about it. Catastrophe is about to befall this city. By the looks of things, Chernobog has been completely paralyzed by Reunion's, Reunion's attacks. But when it comes to disabling a mobile city, the preparations must have been made several weeks in advance. Could Reunion have taken some other action since then? That's a bit unrealistic. Based upon what we've seen, Reunion currently doesn't show the kind of discipline required to stage a covert takeover. Most Reunion members are still wandering the streets, taking revenge on Chernobogians. It's all just senseless fighting, killing and killing and arson. When the catastrophe fa falls, even the impregnable Chernobog will be shattered and turn into Originium-filled ruins. If fame or fortune is what they're after, Reunion is doomed to failure. Even when er with Ursus's chain of command in shambles, I still doubt that Reunion is able to face their military. Why hasn't the Ursus military staged a counterattack yet? From my experience, when a riot breaks out, the military usually manages to, manages to quash it immediately. But we did just witness the Ursus guards getting overpowered. That mass reunion leader might have been a cut above the rest, but there's no way she could single-handedly destroy the entire city. Unless... Unless what? I've fought in many battles before. I've seen many people who acted in the same way as that reunion leader. 
To them, soldiers are nothing more than pawns to be tossed away as soon as they've served their purpose. Soldiers could be used efficiently when needed and then left to their own devices when not needed. Because the cost of training and maintenance is too high. So there's no standing army? Right. Most of the time they simply have to be fed with some hatred or fear. All that's needed is to whip them into a frenzy and is a little push. If the way that reunion leader acted was any indication for how the organization is run... Ugh. Any infected could join reunion simply by donning a uniform and putting on a badge? Correct. So, that explains their endless numbers. There are too many impressed affected, desperately trying to cry out. No matter how tenuous the solutions that reunion offers them might be, as long as they see a light at the end of the tunnel, they will gladly lay their lives down to pursue it, even if it means jumping into a sea of, of hellfire. Ugh. Dr. Tiber, they are not like us. Even if I don't fully trust you, I at least trust your abilities. I really wish I could uh, 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 yeah, express my appreciation there, because that's nice. That's a nice thing to say. And completely unlike you, that kind of leader is no commander. Those who would trample enemies and comrades alive, or rather, minions... Perhaps not even minions. The reunion of those thugs may have been nothing more than pawns. This is not a leader, but a tyrant. No matter who our enemies are, we will complete our mission. Somebody, Someone once told me and taught me and my teammates. If facing a pawn, capture it. If facing a fortress, topple it. If facing the crown, overthrow it. Ace, wait a minute. Dr. Tiber, enemy light armored troops are stationed in front of us. Have we been found? Not yet. However, we won't be able to avoid them. The route we're on is the shortest one. If we take a detour, we'll lose time we don't have. No need for further discussion, then. Thugs or pawns, all that matters is that we clear them out of the, our way. And let's do just that. Alright. So, you can see, the situation's getting a little bit more complex, isn't it? I know what to do. But yes. So, you know, often you will need to defend against uh, attacks from multiple multiple angles. Again, these these initial missions are not terribly difficult, so we don't need to worry too too much about it. But oops. Let's see. Come to think of it, I guess. I didn't bring a caster other than Amiya, huh? Got it. But yes, so I suppose if we want arch damage, we've got an option. The one option. Hmm. I guess Moose can do arch damage too. Garbage. I don't know if I've mentioned that. It appears that Scavenger was not <laughs> not terribly impressed. Not terribly impressed with my my tactical failings there, but oh well. So yes, speaking of Moose, let's go and place her. But yes, so Moose is a guard operator, and she in particular is a guard operator who can deal arch damage. I don't, I don't remember offhand if she always deals arch damage. I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember offhand if she always deals arch damage, or if it's that she deals arch damage when she has her skill active. Because, yes, that is a meaningful distinction. Yeah. Because, yes, not every character does the same type of damage at all times. Not every character who doesn't deal, or not every character who deals different types of damage at different times has the same circumstances under which they, they deal that damage, and so on and so forth. But yes. So, continuing the story... Based on our planned route, we should be approaching the central town of South Chernobog. We'll arrive at the rendezvous point after crossing this park. Assuming no contingencies, Nerol and Team E4 should be waiting for us there. But if Nerol was attacked, what would we do then? What if they wanted to alert us but couldn't due to the communications being jammed? How should we deal with that? 
We will go assess the situation. Oh. Don't start speculating before seeing things with your own eyes. There's no point in letting paranoia get the better of you. I, I see. Losing our communications has caused anxieties to spread through the ranks much faster than I imagined. Especially with this looming catastrophe. We have to pick up our pace. That's it. Uh, what's with this haze? Could it be... Watch out! Kill them. Flashing with an enemy reunion leader. Oh no. Incoming enemy fire. It's a trap. This is bad. Reunion forces have showed up, up behind us. Where's our scout? He got separated from us. Rhodes Island. I've caught you. Kill them all. This time, I'll grind your bones to dust. Dobermen? Snipers, stop their advance. Defenders, hold the line. Get ready to push forward. Ace, prepare to... Time out. Time out. Huh? I only just finished purging the Southeast Fortress, but I rushed over here as soon as I heard the news. These are my hunting grounds, Crown Slayer. Hmm. What'd you come here for? Isn't it about time you hand them over to me? Alright, so, more tutorial time. What a pain. What a pain indeed. Durin is not terribly impressed with our tutorials, unfortunately. We often have to face swarms of enemies. This time we will learn how to deal with a large number of enemy troops. Then, indeed, let us do so. Slug. Slug Alpha. More dangerous than a normal slug. Not that much more dangerous, seemingly, considering that Durin is taking them out pretty quickly anyway. But what if there were two slugs? What if there were four slugs? As you can see, Durin alone cannot eliminate so many enemies within a short time. A common strategy is to deploy a defender together with an AoE caster. Defenders have higher deployment costs, but they also have higher HP, defense, and the ability to block more enemies. For example, defenders like Beagle can block three enemies at the same time. Like 12F, some casters also have AoE attacks. They can quickly eliminate enemy units with low HP. Ah, I know that strategy. Use operators with AoE attacks together with defenders who can gather multiple enemies in an area. Correct, Jessica. Think carefully, then deploy them. This is the place. This is the place. Got it. And so, you will both go to the place, and now we will destroy the enemies here. Everyone, enemies incoming. Indeed. But yes. So as you can see. 12F is doing area damage. Yeah, there is a distinction to be made between what the what I've seen referred to as true AoE, where all enemies within a given area are dealt damage, and the sort of AoE Ready that uh, 12F does, where he doesn't do, you know, he doesn't deal damage in his entire area that he sort of controls here, in his entire, yeah, entire targeting zone. He just happens to deal damage to... He picks a target and deals damage to them and splash damage to enemies around them. This victory is all yours, Doctor. And I am honored to be a pawn in your game of chess. Thanks, 12F. I appreciate it. All right. Yeah, so that was... I think that was... Yeah, yeah, okay. I need to keep better track of these things. <laughs> Mephisto, you have no reason to object, right? Just a few insects that, clo that flew too close to the light. Are they really worth your time? My troops have already received your info. You've already done your part. 
All that's left is for you to do is go home. After all, you're just responsible for the core energy sector and its surroundings. Don't do anything unnecessary. You still have somewhere else to be, don't you? Fine, have it your way. I can't wait to see you fail. Oh? We're leaving. One of the enemy leaders just took a portion of the reunion troops and left? What are they up to? <laughs> Whatever it is, we can't let our guard down. The enemy is still many times our size. Well, well. Please allow me to apologize on Crown Slayer's behalf for her rudeness. You can call me Mephisto. What is Reunion trying to accomplish? Oh, nothing in particular. To be honest, I wouldn't even mind letting you bunch go. You weren't even our targets in the first place. If we weren't your targets, then why... However, I had the honor of watching your battles. Your combat tactics as well as your personnel configuration were quite intriguing. Intriguing? You think that the carnage of battle is intriguing? Rhodes Island, I've read up on your group before. At first, I thought you were just another ordinary company. But, by the looks of things, don't you think your ambitions have stretched a bit too much far from playing with test tubes? It'd be terribly dull if I allowed you to just walk out of here, wouldn't it? What I'd like is to have a little competition. A ritual, of sorts. You don't have time to waste on a pre-operational kid. Amiya, get ready. You might have to break through with force. Look at his attention. Mm, okay. What was that just now? Who are you sending a signal to? None of your business, kid. Amiya? Come on, we're all professionals here. Where's your basic courtesy? People like you didn't exist. I wouldn't have to constantly be honing my insults. Amiya, what's going on? Doberman, all of our escape routes have been blocked by his troops. How can that be? How did he manage to do that in just a few minutes? This simply won't do. Even though I gave you my sincere invitations. But all you can think of is running away. Actually, I'll let you leave my hunting ground safely, as long as you win. Until then, my friends here will keep trying to kill you. It's your victory as long as you don't die. The rules are simple enough, right? Ace? We're already prepared to break through. But we have to stave off their attacks first. Hmm. Why are you doing this? The catastrophe is coming. If we don't leave Chernobog, everyone will... What are you talking about? The catastrophe makes it the best time to celebrate. You're sick. My esteemed guest, I'm honored to invite you to this game. Ugh. Ugh. Kill. Kill. Kill them all. Amia, watch out. Right, right. Actually, we know exactly what you did in the central area. Huh? That masked person you rescued makes me very, very curious. <laughs> Crown Slayer is so fixated on what you're going to do next, where you're going to go. But I'm different. What I care about is... What exactly are you? Where are you from? Yes, you. The one staring at me right now. You're somewhat different from us. What was the device in that facility that was able to preserve your life? I am so very curious. See, I'm not such a cold-blooded person. So, how about it, my esteemed Rhodes Island guess? How about giving this person to me as a gift? It would be a shame to end the game early, but at least I'll let the rest of you go. How about it? Doctor, get behind me. But yeah, definitely not going to let that happen. We wouldn't have a whole lot of a game if I uh, died here. <laughs> So, instead, let us deploy. Take another sip. Conceal yourselves so the enemy won't find you. <clears throat> Concealing ourselves is going to be pretty difficult and not all that, uh, not all that, uh, 
helpful given that this is a tower defense game. But I appreciate your, your input. Uh, yeah, typically, typically in the games that I play on stream here, I try to emulate the characters' voices when I am doing their doing their voices in the story. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar enough with most of the character voices to be able to replicate them in any particular with any particular degree of accuracy. Oh well, yeah. So, one thing about BD, which I might have mentioned before and which you probably have seen if you've seen the previous episode. Episode. I always call them episodes. But uh Weedy here is able to push enemies back with certain some of her attacks. Yeah. I will admit that I don't use push operators very often, except in circumstances where they are particularly helpful. Or rather in areas that are particularly particularly advantageous for them. There are certain areas, for instance, where enemies can be knocked off the stage, basically, for an instant kill. And so that's, you know, situations like that are mostly where I use push operators. Not necessarily to position them. Not necessarily to position them. Which is another thing that you could do. Sit. Alright. Okay, so that was just that. And yes, so we are getting close to the end here. So yes, this took this didn't take anywhere near as long as I thought it would. I guess because not all of these have a before and after story, like I was expecting. And also because I'm doing less tutorializing. Uh, watch out. I'm fine, it's just a scratch, don't worry. Not good enough. At this rate they're gonna close in on us. I've already found the weak point in their line, but without Reinforcements. It's already. It's taking all we have just to hold them back. Please hold out a bit longer. Focus your fire on the ranged enemies. Our casters will take care of their vanguard. Good. Good. This is how things should be. Next up, F3, E5. This bloody brat. Excellent. Excellent. Now E4, E5. Enemy is now trying to flank us. Take two defenders and a sniper. Just keep them busy. And next, H2, H6. They, they, they're rushing our defensive line. Vanguards, flush them out. That's right. Let me see just how you struggle. Now, casters, move to C7. Capture their rook. And the casters have appeared. So far, they're hiding behind their defenders. It's too late. Take cover. Uh. <laughs> now, he snuffed out like flames before a storm. Is he really commanding his troops like that? How can he give such pre precise orders just by marking out chess moves? Obviously, they play a lot of chess in Reunion. The same disorderly thugs have turned into an army under his command. At this rate, He's going to keep exploiting the advantage he gets through his leadership. On the other hand, if we manage to suppress him, they'll fall into disarray. Don't give them even the slightest opening. <sighs> We're running out of time. We can't allow ourselves to be stalled any longer. Is there some way to turn the tables? Anything? We're going to be... Doctor's going to... going on? Why are people getting knocked into the air? What? It, the heck is that? You guys sure took your sweet time. I even had time to relocate the civilians. <gasps> Out of my way. Whoa. Let's hit him even harder. Don't give the enemies a chance to regroup. Miss Nero. I'm here. I'm glad you're still safe, Amia. Let's move. 
Thank goodness you were deployed in this operation. Using the signal flare was judicious. It seems you've been having a rough time. Hmm. You must be Dr. Cyber, right? Radiant Knight Nero, at your service. Your chariot has arrived. Yes, Nero is very cool. Probably not going to get a chance to see a whole lot of Nero in our lineup here for quite a while. But I like Nero. Yeah, most people like Nero, I guess. <laughs> most people I've seen who play this game like Nero. Leave it to us. Let the hunt begin. Let the hunt begin, indeed. Oh, look at this guy. That's a one ragged looking enemy combatant. Unlike before, the, the enemy this time has very high damage and durability. An ordinary Vanguard operator will not be able to withstand it. You should deploy a defender operator with high defense to protect your position. On a side note, you will need to manually activate the skills of these operators. Once activated, the operator will become greatly enhanced within skill duration. So make sure you use the skills wisely when facing difficult situations. Now, try to use these skills at the correct time. So yes, lots of different types of skills to be had in this game. Okay. Unfortunately, with how Adnokiel is positioned, he won't be able to do anything to this junk man until the junk man has already defeated our good friend Fang here. So, uh, sorry, Fang. And I suppose we can always speed through this. Yeah, so one thing that we also probably aren't going to see for a little while is that most characters have more than one skill. Most characters have more than one skill. So yes, you can only have one skill equipped on a character at a given time, but most of them are able to have more than one. And you are able to switch between them. We have the doctor's orders to thank for this. Thanks, Adnokiel. But yes, typically you need to get your characters to a certain level in order to be able to, in order to be able to, uh, yeah, get, get additional skills out of them. I say typically, I don't think that there are any exceptions to that now that I think about it. There shouldn't be, as of last time I checked anyway. What's with this woman? You there. The Reunion forces worked like a well-oiled machine when they took over the Chernobog military strongholds. But your men act like deranged thugs. Mindless slaughter, burning down the city, hunting down innocents. This was all for your own sadistic pleasure, was it not? Someone base enough to, to plot these senseless crimes at a time like this? Could not have possibly designed the plan to take down an entire city. Your commander probably ordered you to cause chaos, but you succumbed to your perversion and tastelessness. Hmm. Faust, I want her shot through the mouth. Hmm. Yeah. Their sniper is ridiculous. Nero gets hit again. She won't be able to defend herself anymore. Nero, you need to retreat. I can't. He's too powerful. I can't afford to let him hit our squads. I have to intercept his attacks. She managed to block Faust Ballista with only a shield? Unbelievable. Impossible. Do it again. Lower to pieces. What? It's coming from my right? Oh, no. Hurry. Dodge. As if I let you. There we go. Everybody likes Ace, too. Ace. Snipers, take aim. Target the raised platform to the south. Fire. What? How dare you? How dare you? Did we get him? I doubt it. The most we can hope for is put some pressure on him. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to dissect our enemy's tactics. He's very mobile and has high firepower. The longer the strag's on, the less likely we will be able to block his shots. We can't give him the time to set up. Amiya, make your move while Team E3 snipers keep him occupied. Understood. Team E1 snipers, come with me and suppress the reunion's forces. Team E2, use all the firepower you have to break through their, their defensive line. You filthy vermin. Why won't you just obediently roll over and die? Why can't I just put an end to you all right here? I want to kill 
Every single one of you. Nero, now's your chance. Hurry. All members of Team E4, we're going to break through their formation. We're going to clear everything out of the way in one fell swoop. Let's run wild. Fire! Fire! Don't let her get any closer! Huh? What? She was 20 meters away just a moment ago. If you wish to stand against Kazimir's knight, come back after you've trained a few more decades. Doberman, follow me. Understood. And that's why everyone thinks Nero is cool. All right. So, this would be the, the final part of this here chapter. And so I think after this, we'll call it. We'll call it, or we'll call it for the gameplay. I'll talk about what I want to talk about, and then we'll wrap up. Scouting complete. I can confirm that the enemies pursuing us have been eliminated. We've managed to break through their encirclement. We'll be at the outskirts of Chernobog soon. Even though the enemies we defeated today were just a small portion of the whole force. And at least we're safe for now. Thank you for what you did back there. I am forever in your debt. Don't say stuff like that. I don't have the right to ask the Radiant Knight for repayment anyway. Anyway, let's talk about that sniper, Nero. Sure. Putting aside the destructive power of that ballista, I think... We might have set up several turrets in advance, as well as other automatically firing devices. I was targeted from different directions, but I only saw one sniper. I had the same feeling. First and second shots exploded at about the same time, but there was a notable delay between them. Those shots weren't fired from the same repeating ballista. At least when, when we returned fire, we weren't targeting the same sniper. Ace, did you realize something? I can't say for sure. What if the enemy was moving so quickly, to the point of basically being in several places at once? There's no any way there's no way anyone could move that quickly. I can't even imagine how it'd be possible. <laughs> Miss twenty meters in a single moment. We can't underestimate how dangerous Reunion is. It was that malicious brat who ordered the sniper to go after you. Didn't even call upon the sniper when he was attacking us. Looks like that disgusting personality of his is backed up by some real power. However, he never attacked us, even when he was angry. So, either his combat capabilities are lacking, or he simply chose not to display his true abilities yet. Just seeing his commanding abilities in action makes me highly suspicious. He was commanding his troops like puppets. In any case, we're no longer in territory that he controls. Yeah, thank you. If not for your timely arrival, we would have been in grave danger. I was just following the plan that we agreed on beforehand. You were the one who asked me and, and Ace to make adjustments depending on the situation. You solved your own problem. On my way here, I saw the extent of Reunion's atrocities and I had doubts about their power. What if I stopped to engage their forces? What if I helped Ursus defend against Reunion? What if I stayed back at the rendezvous point, waiting for you to come to me? If I was the one who called the shots, there's no saying how much worse the outcome could have been. I'm not good at stepping, at thinking several steps ahead. <laughs> stepping several thoughts ahead. The only way I know how, oh, the only way A, I know to get what I want is to keep fighting. Amia, I was only performing my duties, but you have the ability to end the crisis. You earned this victory, so have some more confidence in yourself. Miss Nero. <laughs> this person standing next to you must be the doctor, then. That's right, but... Every time we meet someone, Ami has to repeat the story about how the doctor is suffering from amnesia. What a pain. Dr. Tiber? One of my friends lost her memories as well. I'm sure you two will get along. After all, you should understand how precious living in the present is. Mm-hmm. Let's get going, everyone. We still need to escort the doctor to Rhodes Island. Sorry, I failed. No, don't apologize. It was my mistake. I lost my temper. Can you help me track Rhodes Island? I'll report the situation to Tallulah first. She should have taken over Chandabog's core command tower by now. She will decide the fate of these insects. Understood. Be careful. 
Your safety is the most important thing, all right? I will. I suppose my mission is complete, too. Let's go, comrades. Let us go forth and welcome our new era. To be episode zero, evil time, to be continued. I think I think this might have been the, the post-mission story that we just saw, actually. I wasn't paying that much attention. It was. So now it feels weird doing this stage with just the having already seen the post-mission story. But, you know, I don't want to miss out on the, the boss stage, so to speak. I don't think there's an actual boss Things in this stage, per se. I don't want to hide myself any longer. Well, yes. So, you've seen some pretty, you know, the basic gist of what Arknights is. But yeah. Are we doing this? Typically, I place a vanguard in the front, but that's not ne strictly necessary. Yeah, in situations like this, you know, you're going to want to have defenders blocking off enemies whenever you can. It occurs to me that I don't think I have an AoE uh, character Keep currently. Keep writhing in the gutter. I don't think I have an AoE character right now, so we won't be able to deal with the swarms of enemies quite Incoming. as effectively as we They're might have otherwise. Everyone. But yeah, but looking around, I should have pointed it out earlier, but certain certain spawn points indicate that a that drones spawn from those points, and certain ones just spawn general enemies. Yeah, I think I think drones might also be able to spawn from general enemy spawn points, but typically not the typically not the other way around. Garbage. Scavenger is still not terribly impressed with all I'm saying and doing here, unfortunately. But such is such is as it is. Oh, yes. That's it. <laughs> Matterhorn here is a defender who is able to heal himself. Yeah, or I guess more specifically, he has regeneration. Yeah, spot here. Is it is an operator that can heal other, or is it a defender that can heal other, uh, heal other operators? There we go. Some combinations of the words that I just produced are accurate. Here, are you afraid of me? Not terribly so, no. Let's see. Let's put no Moose down. Just get a little bit more damage on the field. But yeah. So like I said, Matterhorn can heal himself, but he doesn't heal others. Not that it particularly mattered in this particular situation, but you know. It is what it is. So far, I think we I don't think we've needed to use a, a medic at any point. Which again shows you just how easy these early stages are. But yeah, nothing too challenging out of any of them. But yeah. So, with that. I think that will wrap up our Arknighting today. Make away go game. There we go. Turn the background music back on. And so, whoops. Oh dear, what is... Okay, I've encountered some issue, but it shouldn't be... Okay, maybe that maybe that will be an issue. Hold on. No, well, okay. We don't We don't need to worry about it now. It's not an issue for, for you, it's an issue for me. And so I will simply have to address it at another time. So, anyway. Alright. Actually, you know what? I just remembered. Since I'm going to be using the... Uh, yeah, since I'm going to still be using the... Nope, that's not what I wanted. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I was going to say, since we will be still using the... What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, using this as a... Using the other computer as a source. Yeah, I can still keep the, the Arknights audio. I feel like that's a little bit more... A little bit more appropriate. So yeah, anyway. We're going to talk about some other characters today. But yeah. 
So specifically, we're going to be going over Operations Team A4. I'm going to take another sip real quick before we get into that. That's it. So yes. So the reason that I talk about Operations Team A4 is not specifically because of Operations Team A4. Uh, more so, it is because of what some of the members of the of said team are involved in. Specifically, there is a Arknights Monster Hunter crossover. Yeah, it was announced a good long while ago. It was announced a good long while ago, but it was never really... I don't know, I guess it's still not relevant to what we're doing here, per se. But it was less relevant before. And now I just wanted to talk about it because I'm excited about it, basically. Yeah, if I remember correctly, it is already out in the Chinese version of the game, but we are not expecting it in the English version for, I think, until September. Typically, it's about six months between updates on the Chinese server and updates on the global servers, I think. But uh, anyway, so we're not expecting the, Arc or the Monster Hunter crossover until then. But the reason that I bring this up is because two of the operators from this arc, this Monster Hunter crossover, are, uh, or two of the operators from the, yeah. Let's take that again. Two of the operators from Operations Team A4 are featured in this Arc Knights Monster Hunter collaboration crossover event that's happening at some point. Hopefully, by the time it happens, we'll have progressed in Arc Knights far enough that I am able to participate in it properly. I would very much like to do that on stream, especially because while most events rerun in Arc Knights, most events rerun, and even the ones that, uh, you know, aren't rerunning currently, you can still look through the story for them and all that. But yeah. Uh, so far, the only other collaboration uh, event, Operation Originium Dust, which was the Rainbow Six Siege, and Arc Knights crossover. Uh, that one has never rerun. That one has never rerun, and I don't think it's accessible in the story. Or ex I don't think it's accessible in the... You can't go through it and see the story of it, I don't think. If I remember correctly. But yeah, so you... Unlike... Uh, you cannot revisit the story of it like you can other other events, I should say. Which is all very unfortunate. So if we ever want to see that, uh, we won't be seeing it here, basically. <laughs> I won't be playing through it, most likely. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, again, unless Ubisoft and uh, Hypergriff decide to decide to do another collab, maybe. But uh, in the absence of that, most likely not. So we're not here to stare at a blank screen. Instead, we're here to stare at operators. One of whom is Yato. But yes. So, I suppose I should be clarify a little bit. I should clarify a little bit because I'm not just here to talk about o operations team A4. I'm here to uh, talk about two star operators in general. Operations team A4 being most of the two star operators. So to go into what that means, basically. Yeah, if the Oh, I wish I had my tablet plugged into my, my other laptop now. Oh, hold on. Actually, well, no, that would that take too long to set up. So we're just going to have to just going to have to live with this, unfortunately. But yes, so operators are organized by rarity. The rarity basically goes from one star to six star, but one star is sort of special. And two star is basically all the operators that you have when you start. Yeah, you do not um, you do not have to roll to get any of the two star operators. You have you just sort of have them. You can get copies of them, and getting additional copies of an of an operator allows you to enhance them in various ways. But uh, by and large, you know your two star operators are simply there. You you will always have access to them basically from the from the moment that you are able to access your whole set of operators because yes the characters that you see in the story that you are you know associated with commanding and all that 
aren't necessarily the same ones that you're able to deploy in missions and all that. So yes, so two star operators include all of operations team A4 and one other person. One other person. Yes, and we will get into that other person as well. We've seen them already, I think. With one exception, I think we might have seen every single every single member of the uh, two stars today at various points. Also, real quick, real quick, I wanted to, uh, <laughs> this is a, a bit of an aside, considering that this is not any, this operator does not fit into any of the categories that we've just discussed other than being involved in the Monster Hunter collab, but, whoops, move here, whoops, shrink you down, there we go. So, this operator, we'll put Yato away for the moment. This operator is one, another one who's been introduced in the, in the Monster Hunter collab. This is the Terra Research Commission, I believe is what they're being called. I don't know if that's the official name or just sort of a translated version of it, because, you know, I didn't do research today to talk about the Terra Research Commission, to be honest. I'm here to talk about Operation Team A4 and also another person. But yes, I just wanted to share with you that the, the, one of the collaboration operators is three palicos sitting on each other's shoulders, which is very fun and very cute, and I hope that you appreciate it as much as I do. Anyway, so I guess since I brought it up, we'll go over rarity a little bit more. So yes, so more stars equals more rare, broadly speaking, except for the fact that one star operators are also pretty rare, more so really than most other rarities, except for perhaps, I would say, six stars. Honestly, I get more five stars. I get five stars more often than I get one stars. We'll get we'll get into one stars later. We might do that next time, actually. In fact, that'd be fun. <clears throat> but yes, so two stars are generally kind of weak. <laughs> not great. Three stars are not spectacular, but they're pretty workable. Four stars are generally pretty good. Five stars are just generally very reliable. And six stars are generally very good. But yeah, this isn't a game where you really necessarily need to have all the highest, you know, to have a team entirely consisting of, you know, six stars or whatever. But uh, yeah, using just three stars will, or using just two stars won't get you very far. Using just three stars will get you further but not all that far either. Four stars is, I think, generally the point where, you know, a character can be relied upon to perform reliably <laughs> into later into the game. Yeah, where other, other, yeah, other rarities, rarities above that are, you know, better. Rarities below that are worse, generally speaking, but Again, it's not the sort of game where you really desperately need to have super rare characters because it's, you know, a lot more, a lot more in the strategy. If you're good at strategy, you can get by with lower level and lower rarity characters more easily than you can otherwise and so on and so forth. So anyway, <laughs> all of that being said, Yato. Yes, so Yato is an Oni. <clears throat> I guess we haven't really talked about the various, uh, the various races that live in, in the world of Ark Knights, <clears throat> which we will come to learn is called Terra. I say we will come to learn is called Terra, having said just now that it is called Terra. That's it. Yes, Yato is an Oni, which is one of the, the many races that, that inhabit Terra. But yes. She is the leader of the operations team A4, and so on and so forth. She is one of the characters who is in the the collab. I don't want to spend too much time, considering that we just spent all that much time <laughs> talking about rarities and all that when I wasn't planning to. But uh, maybe we'll we'll show her collab character art at some point. But yes. So she is an Oni. 
She is a, a pretty, considered to be a pretty good operator, you know, in universe. She is a reliable member of Rhodes Island. She is a reliable captain for her squad. But yeah, she is also very cool looking. Oops, don't do that. The scroll wheel on my mouse is like very broken. <laughs> I should stop using it because it does not work. Yes, Yato, pretty cool. He's got a nice sword. He's got a name tag. One fun thing about Arc Knights is I like to see I like to see the characters. Blah, blah, blah. I like to see like just how every character has like name tags. A lot of them do, not all of them do. Especially the ones who are more closely affiliated with Rhodes Island, specifically, tend to have name tags. Which makes sense. It's company policy, I suppose. Yeah, you can you can often tell what faction a character is associated with, more or less just by their design. <clears throat> the sort of des certain design elements are typically shared. Often they're drawn by the same illustrator or have the same similar sort of color schemes for their outfits and whatnot. But yeah, Yato is is well regarded in general in in the uh, in Rhodes Island. Yeah, she's not exceptional in performance, but she is, you know, respectable. She is very respectable in universe. Yeah, she has an ability that reduces her deployment time, or her redeployment time, I should say. There's one thing about this game is you can only have each character down at one place at a time, obviously, because there's, you know, a person can only occupy one space at any given time, unless, unless they're just that fast, but, uh, but yes. A character can only occupy one space on the board at a time, and so when they are defeated or when you retreat them, they, you know, go back to your stock of operators that you can deploy, but there is a certain time that uh, you must wait before they can be deployed again. And so Yato has a skill that reduces her redeploy time. I don't remember... I know it reduces it by 30 seconds. I don't know what her... how long it takes for her to redeploy without it. Or even with it, now that I think about it. Or even with it, now that I think about it. So, I can't say how much of a of a benefit that uh, that gives you for Yato. But, you know, if you want a use case for her, if you want a character that deploys cheaply and can redeploy quickly, she's pretty okay for that. Unfortunately, uh, she is a vanguard unlike other vanguards. She does not generate uh, deployment points. So she's really not very, she's not a very vanguard e vanguard. Not a very vanguard e vanguard. She can be used as something akin to a rapid redeployment specialist, which is a archetype that we have not gone over before, I don't think. But unfortunately, she doesn't have uh, she doesn't have all that much going over going for her. But yeah, so. Let's see. Some other facts about Yato is that uh, her skin is photosensitive, so she prefers to be deployed at night. Uh, her name, written out in kanji, is read as Nightblade. Appropriately. I suppose I should say her code name. There's one thing about Arc Knight's operators is that a lot of them have names that are not their names. They aren't referred to by their, their given names in story. hit. So, you know, I guess to bring up another example, Rainbow Six, you know, almost every character in Rainbow Six is referred to primarily by their code name, <clears throat> but most of them do have, like, you know, a, you know, first name and a family name that we know, also know them by. This is not true of a lot of Arknights operators. A lot of them, we, we only know, you know, their, their uh, given name or only know their surname or perhaps don't know either of those and only know their code name. So yes, so Yato's name uh, very well could be not Yato. But yes, anyway, so Yato is also an infected. She is one of the, the members of Rhodes Island who is infected. There are a lot of them. There are a lot of members of Rhodes Island who are infected, but it is not, it is certainly not an infected only operation or an infected only organization. I should be careful when I'm using words like operation, considering, you know, operators and all that. 
But anyway, so also involved in the Monster Hunter collab is whoops. Whoops is his, is not his code name or his name, I don't think. But instead, he is he goes by Noir Corn. Whoops. Yeah. Like I like I said, the scroll wheel on my mouse is very broken. <laughs> I don't know how long it's been as such, but like, just to give you an example, like this is just me scrolling in. Like it'll randomly sort of scroll in and out. Like that is me going in one direction as much as I possibly can. Oh dear. And even if I, if I just touch it the, the lightest degree I possibly can, it still, it still does that. So anyway, Noir Corn, he is also an Oni. But yeah, there's a fair amount to be said about him, or there's more to be said about him anyway. There's more to be said about the two of them, I suppose I should say. Once again, they are both in the collab. I might show you their, their sprites from that later on, a different day. Yeah, they both wear masks. They're both Oni, I think I already said that. Yeah, Noir Korn has a has a collection of masks. He has a mask for every occasion. Yes, the the one that he is pictured with as wearing is the one that he uh, believes is most suited to Rhodes Island's ambiance. So that is what he typically wears. But yes, there is no there is no great secret that is hidden underneath his mask, according to his files or according to his his own words. I think. No, actually, I think it's according to his files. I guess I should show the operator files at some point. I don't have an operator that... I don't think I have an operator that the entire file is unlocked for now that I think about it. But I guess that doesn't matter too much if I'm just giving you a an example. So that you have some idea of what I'm talking about when I say things like this. But yes, so anyway. Noir Korn is a defender. His uh, He has a passive that gives him additional... I believe it's... 12.5% additional HP and... 12.5% mm, doesn't see, sound right. Let me check my notes again. No, just 12%. Okay. Yes, 12% increased max HP and defense. But yeah. So there's also a, uh, <clears throat> a side story that you can uh, unlock involving uh, Noir Corn that uh, gives some more information about him and about Yato. Uh... I won't be going over that right now because it includes some story spoilers. I, I learned from uh, doing some cursory research about it. But yes, Noir Corn is also an infected member of Rhodes Island. And so, okay. Next on the list, whoops. I should have positioned these layers such that everyone was, <laughs> wasn't being introduced uh, being blocked by everyone who came in before them. So, let me do some real quick reorganization. And maybe I could have laid them out beforehand, but you know. So, this next fellow is Rangers. Yes, he is a sniper. We saw him. Yeah, I don't think... Again, we saw everyone, all of the two stars today, other than, I think, Noir Corn. We might have seen him last week. But yes, so anyway, this fellow here is Rangers, also known as Grandpa Rangers to some. But yes, he is an old Savra man. Savra being a uh, a race in Arknights that have uh, lizard-like features, and sometimes also uh, yeah, non-lizard-like features in some cases. Creatures that are uh, similar to lizards in some respects, typically similar in form. But yeah. A notable thing about the races in Arknights, which we'll I'll get into at some later point, but um, typically they have a, a sort of motif, generally. Some of them are based on types of mythological creatures, like Oni. Some of them are based on different uh, creatures, like Savra are with lizards. Um, Amia, whom we've seen, is what is called a Cautus. Uh, she, is, she is a rabbit person, basically. You may see people refer to her as a donkey. This is a joke. You know, memes are memes are fun here and there, but um, do not be do not be confused if you want actual lore. She is a a rabbit person. But um, but yes, 
yeah where was i oh right rangers <laughs> rangers is a sniper yeah he has a a uh, skill that gives him additional i believe it's a an additional 50 percent damage against aerial targets which is pretty good something one thing that you'll see about a lot of the two stars is that while they have pretty bad stats on their own a lot of them have some pretty good skills for them such that they have certain use cases that are valuable plus they're typically pretty cheap to deploy typically the higher rarity a unit is the more it costs to deploy which is another reason not to necessarily fill your squad with just high rarity units because they you know you will struggle to get them onto the field sometimes you'll struggle to get them onto the field and it's also uh, more expensive to level up higher rarity units. Just want to double check something. Okay, we should be good. All right, anyway, so Rangers. Rangers is pretty cool. He is well regarded as being pretty cool in universe and out. But yes, he is He is known by, by a number of nicknames, including the Ranger of the Red Valley and the Scimitar of the Bloody Valley. Two names that seem like they could be related, but maybe those are two different valleys. <clears throat> but yes, he, many t many tales have been told by him. Many tales have been tell told about him. He insists that a lot of them are not true, or at least not entirely true. But you can make your own decisions, of course. In our hearts, we all know that Grandpa Rangers is the coolest. But yes. So anyway, Rangers is a code name. Also, it is a it is a reference in universe to a a group of Rangers that he used to belong to, uh, the uh, yeah Sargonian Rangers. I don't know if that's their proper name, but that's what they were referred to as when I saw it earlier. But yes, the Sargonian Rangers who are in a region known as Sargon, which we will see at a later point. There's a lot of events that take place there. So we'll definitely get to that at some point, though I don't think we'll be getting to that in the main, in the actual main game story for quite a while, probably, or at all, actually. I don't know if there's any chapters that actually involve Sargon in any way in, in the main story. But yeah, anyway. Uh, Rangers is uninfected. Or what it is, uh, what it is worth. So again, you know, Rhodes Island is not specifically an infected organization. It is an organization that respects the infected. It is an organization that is uh, where a lot of members are infected, but it does not exist purely for and or does not exist purely for and by the infected. There are anyone is welcome so long as they are able to, uh, you know, willing to help, able to help and all that. So yes, next on the list is Durin. Durin is Durin, but she's also a Durin. This is a point of some confusion in universe because she is the, the first Durin that a lot of the operators of Rhodes Island have met. I suppose I'll have to not use my mouse wheel again, move people around as I talk here. But yeah, so anyway, Durin is a Durin and she named herself after her, her race or she na she codenamed herself after her race. But yes, this has caused some consternation to other Durin who have uh, followed uh, along and joined Rhode Rhodes Island after her, or at least caused some issues for a specific Durin who does not necessarily want to be want to be considered, you know, associated with this Durin specifically. Yes, this Durin, the Durin called Durin is a Durin who is very sleepy. She likes to sleep a lot. She likes to eat a lot. She is uh, a little bit of a of a slacker, you could say. Yes, so not necessarily the, the person that you necessarily want to be representing your your uh, whole whole culture, perhaps. But yeah, is the sort of uh, concern of this other Durin who I don't know. It feels weird to to talk about how she doesn't want to necessarily be associated with Durin and then not name her after saying that she is that she talking about her relationship with Durin the Durin. Myrtle is her name. 
Not Mer not Durin the Durin's name. We don't know Durin the Durin's name, I don't think. But Myrtle is the other Durin that doesn't want to be associated with Durin the Durin, whom I've only ever <laughs> mentioned so far in, in her relationship to Durin the Durin. So sorry, Myrtle. Anyway, so Durin is a caster. She is a single target caster, unlike the AoE caster that we saw earlier and whom we will see again in the not too distant future. Yeah, like I said, she she likes to she likes to take it easy. She likes to take it easy and uh, takes it a little bit too easy for some um, for the taste of some. But yes, she gets the work done. She gets the work done, just maybe not necessarily in the most efficient fashion, the quickest fashion, the most uh, well-respected fashion. But again, she does well. Does well enough. Yeah, she is notable for her very large, her very large uniform, which she she favors over having one that is appropriately sized to her, because uh, it's very cozy when she when she takes her naps. And see so, yeah, again, looking over these various Rhodes Island operators, you can see that they all have a sort of similar color scheme, sort of a dark, dark, uh, dark colored in general, with blue accents, some white here and there. They also have the. Uh, I guess now that I think about it, now that I think about it, I don't see a name tag on Rangers. I thought he did have one too, but uh, yeah. Again, it's a very common design element for Rhodes Island operators to have a name tag on them somewhere, but not all of them necessarily do. So yes. So next on the list is the only two star that were that uh, exists so far who is not a member of uh, Team A4. Yeah, the existence of a, or rather, uh, let me rephrase that. Him not being a part of Team A4 is not, you know, anything super, super, eh, super notable in story, but it was, it was striking to me because I thought, I thought this whole time that he was, basically just on account of the fact that he's a two star and most two stars are. Yes. So, 12F, we've seen earlier. I don't know if I mentioned him by name then. But uh, 12F is a caster. He is an AoE caster. He is also a Sabra, like good old Grandpa Rangers down here. And so, 12F is notable for the fact that he also has uh, a degree of amnesia. Yeah, the, the way it is described is like he, he remember, remembers the battles that he has seen. He has lived a long time as a mercenary. Maybe not all that long, but he has served as a mercenary for a good while. But while he remembers the, the battles he has fought and all that, he does not remember his home or his family or anything like that. A tragic thing, to be sure. But, um, yes. So, 12F is notable in, again, he's notable for some reasons out of universe, but in universe he is notable for being pretty okay. Basically, he is not considered to be great by any metric, basically, but he's slightly above average as a caster and he's pretty effective as a Rhodes Island member. He gets the job done sufficiently, and that's mo most of what most people have to say about him. Oh, yeah, I guess I forgot to talk about the skill that uh, the passive skill that Durin has. She uh, has a 50% chance to dodge, uh, let me double check. Yeah, a 50% chance to dodge arch damage, there we go. So yeah, so a 50% chance to dodge any source of arch damage. This is a pretty good use case for her as a distraction for certain enemies that tend to deal very high arch damage. <clears throat> And so yes, so 12F similarly has a 50% chance to dodge any physical damage that comes his way. Yeah, I think, I think I heard it described as specifically ranged attacks is a 50% chance to dodge ranged physical attacks. But since he deploys on ranged tiles, melee enemies can't attack him anyway. So I think that anything that could attack him is by definition a ranged attack. So. I guess I don't know that for sure, because there may be some melee enemies that have AoE attacks or something like that that could hit him, 
on a ranged tile, but aren't considered to be ranged attacks. So maybe I should have done just a little bit more research before I spoke on this. But yes, one way or another. Um, some reasons that 12F are notable out of universe, however, include the fact that he was drawn by the, or he was illustrated by the CEO of uh, the company that develops this game, uh, Hypergriff. Actually, hold on. Is it? Is it Hypergriff? <laughs> is it Hypergriff or is it uh, Yostar? Oh dear, I've forgotten. Uh, let me check. <laughs> yes, Hypergriff. Okay. Or no. Wait, hold on. Oh, he's not the CEO. Maybe. Okay, he's the founder of it, though. <laughs> Pardon. My fact-checking was... did My fact-checking on the operators was pretty accurate, but I, it occurs to me that I didn't think to check on all that much outside of the specific operators I was talking about today. <laughs> anyway, uh, this... The guy, uh, known as Low Light, typically speaking, in the English community, but... Um, Low Light uh, did the art for 12F, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, the the design for 12F actually has existed for for quite a while since before Ark Knights came into existence. But yeah, so I don't know if that has too too much relevance. I considered sharing that image as well, the the first image that we have of 12F, but um, I don't know. I don't know that that is super relevant considering that again. It was drawn, like, for a separate thing, for a separate thing. I don't remember the full context of it. Drawn for a separate thing years before Ark Knights started development even. So it's not like it's anything that has any tremendous relevance to the, the plot of Ark Knights. So I decided to omit it for time. And honestly, if I had just included that, I probably would have, say, I probably wouldn't have spent, right, prop, yeah. Pardon. I probably wouldn't have spent all that much more time, if any more time, explaining that image than I have explaining why I didn't include that image. So perhaps I should be a little bit more, a little bit more efficient with some of my descriptions here. But yeah, anyway, so 12F has some, some uh, significance from that, and for another reason that we will see later, perhaps. But uh, again, a little bit of a spoiler. So yeah, so real quick before we before we go, I did also want to show uh, another another thing. Whoops, there we go. So yes, so as as we've seen, my mouse is still broken, so I should stop using it. Honestly, I don't know how I managed to use it so well in my day to day life. I don't know how I managed to use it so well in my day-to-day -day life that I'm used to using it enough to unconsciously use it on, on stream here. But, uh, so yes. So like I was saying, Rangers and 12F are Savra, but they are not the only Savra in the game, and not every Savra has this specific sort of look about them, with these relatively, relatively less humanoid appearances. Yes, another Savra in this game is Asbestos here, whom I included largely because her name is very funny. Her name is very funny, or her code name is very funny. Asbestos herself is a little bit funny, but mostly I chose her for because I wanted to share her code name, and also the fact that she is, again, an example of a Savra who is somewhat more anthropomorphic than, than the others, the others that we have seen so far. I don't know if there's any necessarily implications to that. It seems to be mostly an artistic choice, one way or the other. But that is a discussion that we'll have on another day, I think. Because yes, we are getting pretty close to the end of our time here. Anyway, Asbestos is not a is not a two star or a member of Team A4, so we won't talk about her any further, and she will she will appear no more. Perhaps later, Asbestos. But yeah. Anyway, so that is all the game that I was planning on playing, and that was all the topic I was planning on talking about. So, let us return, and let us set up the raid. Let's see who's online today. So yeah, well, actually, hold on. Right, of course. 
If anyone has any raid suggestions, please feel free to please please feel free to provide them or or yeah. Please feel free to provide your raid suggestions. There we go. We'll leave it at that. That's it. Yes, I can definitely feel the feel the feeling of having not uh not streamed in a few days. Throat's a little bit sore by the by the end of the stream today. But it is it is just fine. So yeah. So no no suggestions it looks like. So I think we're going to go and visit a physicist. Not a physicist. We are going to visit physicist. The one and only physicist, other than other physicists who are not this physicist. Physicist is is their uh, screen name, though. Ba -ba -ba. And I got to double check to make sure that I'm spelling it correctly, and I am not. I am not. So let me go and grab the <laughs> grab the username so that I can just copy and paste it and not make a fool of myself attempting to to spell it and perhaps getting it wrong, which would be very unfortunate. We've sp we've misspelled raids before. We've misspelled raid raid targets before, because and I, I definitely don't like ah. Staying with me, who I'm. I don't know who that is. I should be more careful with my Twitch, <laughs> so that I don't get random other streams in the middle of my stream. Ba -ba -ba. Anyway, so that was not physicist, and I don't know who that was, and we're not going to concern ourselves with it. Instead, we're going to concern ourselves with a raid, and we're going to concern ourselves with the schedule. So, like I said, tomorrow we're expecting a little bit of a little bit of anniversary related content. A little bit. Might be might be a short stream tomorrow, might not. We will it will simply depend. But yeah. Thursday we should be expecting some more Valhalla with our good friend Sheppy Sheps. And then Friday, or also Tuesday, or Wednesday, someday. Wednesday we'll also be expecting some uh Tales of Arise in addition to the to the anniversary uh event. Or perhaps uh yeah. Blah. I just realized I forgot to turn the background music back on. So this is getting very confusing. So tomorrow, Wednesday, uh Tales of Arise and Anniversary, possibly just anniversary if I'm feeling tired that day. Thursday should be some more or VA eleven Hall A, also known as Valhalla, with our good friend Sheppy Sheps. And then Friday should be some more Tales of Arise. So all of that should be what it needs to be. So, oh yes, also all streams are at 8.30 p.m. Central Time uh, scheduled for. So, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you'll be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much and farewell. Let us get this raid underway. <laughs>